Any of you Italian? Are you Italian? It's a f***ing insult to your people. It's an insult to your f***ing people. It's like the N-word for us. Yeah, you're going to have a f***ing problem. What? What are you going to do about it? I'll f***ing ruin your shit. I'll f***ing throw you down these stairs like a f***ing punk. Please do. Why? So you can sue? You don't want to sue? Well, why don't you do it? Go take a swing. You want to call me Fredo? Take a f***ing swing. Take a f***ing swing. Watch your f***ing hands. Take a swing. Watch your f***ing hands. Take a swing. No, no, come on, boy. Come on, boy. So you want to call me Call me that. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. So what you just saw there is Chris Cuomo, host of Cuomo Prime Time on CNN, also brother of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. He was having a public meltdown because he was approached by a man who then referred to him as Fredo while he was out with his family on New York's Shelter Island. And so CNN has come out in defense of Cuomo by saying, oh, you know, we stand by him. He was only defending himself after being referred to with an ethnic slur. And then Cuomo himself can be seen in the video telling the man that saying Fredo to an Italian is like saying the N-word. And that's not true and we know that it's not true because we will we'll say Fredo we won't even say the other word that word is contained to its first letter so we can tell just by the way that he's referring to it that it's infinitely worse and that was uh that was John Mulaney's joke he did about like saying midget on TV or something but that's the thing because to compare the plight of the Italian to the plight of the African American in this country doesn't emphasize that Italians have had it really hard it just undermines the hardships that have faced the black community and so it's an absurd connection to draw and Italians have weighed in on this by saying that yes it's insulting but it's not as bad as the n-word and it definitely the word alone doesn't warrant the type of violent reaction that Cuomo gave and it's funny too because Cuomo after being referred to with a negative Italian stereotype chooses to react with a negative Italian stereotype the next person that sees Chris Cuomo in public should tell him, just, hey Chris, go home and get your effing shine box just to see what happens. That'd be a good, uh, that'd be a good clip. But anyways, as I said, that word alone isn't enough to warrant that reaction. I'd argue that there's very little that you could say to somebody that would warrant that type of reaction. I mean, he's swearing at the guy, he's threatening violence. I think it's a huge overreaction on his part except for one thing that actually shifts the balance in his favor, and that's the fact that he was out with his family. Cuomo was out with his wife and his nine-year-old daughter, and this guy comes up to him and he calls him Fredo, which is an insult, and I've heard that it wasn't intended to be an insult. I've heard that the guy who called him that was just a fan of Rush Limbaugh, and he's heard Limbaugh refer to Cuomo as Fredo so many times that he actually thought that that was his name. I don't know if that's true, but even if it were true that this guy didn't mean any disrespect, how is Cuomo supposed to know that? You don't just insult a man in front of his family, and if you do, you better expect a reaction. Not necessarily because of the insult or the disrespect, but because you're doing that in front of a man's family. You're undermining the role of that man in his family when you do that. You know, you're making him look weak in front of his family. You're testing him. And frankly, the guy's lucky that he didn't get punched in the mouth. And that's probably because Cuomo knew that because of who he is as a public figure, there's too much at stake to react in that way. But that's how most men would react in that situation. And rightfully so. You don't do that. And if you do, you know, if you don't believe me, Go try it. Go up to a man who's out with his family. Go test him. Because here's the thing. At that point, what's at stake is the respect that the man's family has for him. Because if he lets you walk all over him, I guarantee you that his family will never look at him in the same way again. And so unless he really is beta, he's going to react. Maybe not necessarily with force, but you'll get a reaction. And that's well deserved. But the question from there would be, would Cuomo have reacted the same way if he weren't in front of his family? And I guess we'll never know, but we can probably extrapolate a general idea from his demeanor on television. What's important to note, though, is how CNN didn't hesitate to defend Cuomo for his reaction by hiding under the blanket of, oh, well, he was defending himself from racial slurs. Like, okay. All right, CNN. Now, I know this is likely the first time you've heard this, but that story is not entirely accurate. It isn't as if he just brushed it off and said, no, in fact, I am not Fredo. I am Cuomo. Literally speaking, that would be defending against it. What he did was cause a scene and threaten the man with physical violence. I mean, he threatened to throw him downstairs. And you have to understand that if any conservative did this, the left would be calling for them to be fired. There would be huge outrage online. But Cuomo has lucked out because people on the right that are seeing this, they're basically thinking like, hey, you know, that's understandable. We don't do that in front of a man's family. Good for him. Maybe we're mocking him a little bit, you know, but for the most part, we understand it. The left would never give us that benefit of the doubt. And, you know, if the network was like Fox, Fox News, you know, if they stood by one of their anchors after one of their anchors physically threatened somebody like that, there would be so much hell to pay. It would dominate the news cycle for weeks. They'd probably even be fired. And both CNN and Cuomo are total hypocrites. Take a look at this woman casually dropping the Fredo word in reference to Donald Trump Jr. Uh, Daddy kept Fredo back home. So... Who cares what Donald Trump Jr. says? 
Who cares what Donald Trump Jr. says? So it's okay when that woman refers to Donald Trump Jr. as Fredo, then it's fine. I mean, you look at Cuomo's face, doesn't even flinch. In CNN, they let it run on air, they don't censor it or anything, she's not called out for it. And the reason for that is that the Trump family is the enemy of CNN. And because of that, it doesn't matter what you say about them, what stories you spread about them, whether or not any of it's true, anything's fine as long as it accomplishes the goal of harming the Trump family. And the other reason for that, which is perhaps just as obvious, is that calling someone Fredo is not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. The thing that's actually a big deal is that he thinks that it's a big deal. That he thinks that calling someone Fredo is like calling someone the N-word is a big deal. And that's where the media would be focusing their attention if Chris Cuomo weren't one of theirs. Remember, uh, there was that rumor, oh, there's a tape that exists of Donald Trump saying the N-word and everyone in the media, they flipped out. They relentlessly covered this story about this tape that supposedly exists and it contains proof that Donald Trump has said the N-word. And despite this, no tape ever actually surfaced. But that doesn't matter because now it's in the minds of the public. So when the media says, oh, well, Trump's a racist, then the low information voter goes, oh, yeah, you know, I remember hearing about that tape of him saying the N-word. What an absolute racist. It didn't happen. What did happen is a CNN anchor claimed on tape. We have a tape. We just showed it to you that saying Fredo is like saying the N-word. I'd like to know where Al Sharpton is. I'd like to know why the ACLU has been quiet. I mean, it's like we know why, so I guess it's redundant. And it's because they're on the same team. And when your allegiance is to a team instead of to a set of principles, then you don't attack your team. Doesn't matter if they act in ways with which you disagree, they're on your team. They're fighting and advocating for the same general ideas that you are, and therefore the manner by which they fight for those ideas or act well in the process, totally irrelevant. All that matters is that they fight. And conservatives know this, Trump knows this, yeah. You know, it's basically what we're used to. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, what else is new? But Trump has responded by adding a shirt to his re-election campaign store that is just fantastic. And you can also text Fredo to 88022 to receive updates and news on the Trump campaign. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I'll fucking throw you down these stairs like a fucking punk. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we're only about 15,000 away from breaking 100,000. And when we break 100,000, we got big plans. So if you want those big plans to be soon plans, you'll share this video, you'll share this channel, you know, let's get the word out. Big plans can be sooner, you know? It doesn't compromise the integrity of the magnitude of the plan to, to bump it up, you know? I'm ready, let's do it. But thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.